up only. 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, <laughs> Hello and welcome to Up Only TV. I'm Ledger. We got Kobe on the line. Keyboard Monkey and Flood Capital are with us today. We're excited to have them. Before we get to that, let me tell you about our partners over at FTX. Go to uponly.tv slash FTX. You can trade there today. You can dollar cost average in if it's time to do so. Hopefully we'll find out whether we're allowed to buy the dip yet today. Uh, I'm not optimistic, which probably means it's time. Uh, but do all of those things and track your portfolio at FTX. Go to uponly.tv slash FTX. Thanks to them for being our partners. Let's get to the show. Kobe, how you doing? I like it's just so painfully warm. This room is so warm. <laughs> I like sweating a bit. I can't make it colder. It's not not good. Do you have I'm fine. Condition? I'm fine, mate. How are you? I'm uh doing pretty well. Better than you based nice. on the sound of it. Uh, I'll be I'll be right. right. I'll be fine. You're good. Uh we got a wide age range with us today <laughs> can't see keyboard monkey but keyboard monkeys are you 50 51 50? yeah about that 52 and a half yeah. this year and then we got flood who's did you just turn 18 19 20 i'm turning just, 21 soon you just turned 20 jeez so does that mean when you were last you came on this a year ago were you actually 19 yeah but I think I didn't say anything because I didn't want you guys to kick me off. Are you excited? <laughs> Are you excited to have your first alcoholic beverage next year? Yeah, well, I'm in Canada, so <laughs> oh, the drinking okay. age is 19 here. But yeah, in the states, yeah. But, yeah. Hmm. So, like, when you came on last, you made like some prediction about inflation, and Matty Sino dunked on you and told you that you were wrong and uh, that you were an idiot. Um, what happened? Yeah, so when I came on, I think it was in last June, I said, I think within the next like two years, or maybe it was four years, there's going to be inflation between like five to 10% for like a decently extended period of time. And basically, <clears throat> that was kind of like a bigger macro view of the US is in the most debt it's been in uh, relative to their economy since World War Two, And like the last time that they're in the situation, uh, they had to keep like inflation high um, in order to kind of like de-lever out of their debt. So like negative real rates where like the rate of inflation is higher than the interest rates they're paying out. Um, and I still think that's true, but obviously like this is something that happens over like multiple years. It's not just like one and done. Yeah. He dunked on you pretty hard, did Matty? And then he counter dunked on him <laughs> in December. Yeah. When, yeah, when the inflation numbers came out, someone sent me a clip of him being like, there's no chance this will ever happen. <laughs> and then I I uh, posted it on Twitter, so that felt good, but I didn't, I didn't rub it in too much. Definitely some luck involved. He's probably coping um, now, you know? Doesn't he a big cope guy? <laughs> Did you see cope went down like 80% in one candle because the developer said that they had to raise capital and VCs didn't want to give them any more money? <laughs> so they just market sold like a huge percentage of their floating supply. I think that's I think that's what should happen. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, it's not great for. The... Look, that's just sound financial planning. That's just healthy dumping. <laughs> you think they could do because if you're a holder, or... yeah, if you're a holder, right, of whatever, and the developers run out of money, you're fucked. So. They may as well be the ones dumping in order to try and build something. The truth is, no matter what, you're fucked. So, so you may as well have the, the minor injection of hope that they might be able to build something useful. 
what else is going to happen? A bunch of like extractive traders are going to dump it to zero. We're going to like short it all the way down, <laughs> and the developer still can't build anything. So, I I'm very supportive of developers dumping all the tokens in a single candle. Uh, he could have he could have Yoshi. I don't know. They could have used a twap. They didn't have to market sell everything, Wait, right? Like you call it a twap. <laughs> yeah. What do you call it? A T wap. No, it's hey, definitely I call a twap. It T-wop. T-wop. No, it's a twap. <laughs> Sounds like twat. It's great. It's a twap. <laughs> it is not a twap. I'm twapping out. That's how you. That's how you, you don't T wap out. You you just twap out. I'm twapping out. It's like tapping out. I'm twapping out. I'm out of it. I think that means something different. <laughs> I think that guy saved everyone a lot of mental anguish too. All the holders now they know it's a zero instead of yeah, like they just being in limbo them. forever. That's right. Just mark their like, down there. It helped them. Yeah. Wait. Let's Closure. see what chat says. Is chat saying it's TWAP or TWAP? TWAP is terrible. <laughs> TWAP. I kind of like the TWAP. TWAP or TWAP. Yeah. TWAP. Is... So you're TWAPing out. That sounds like a bad dance. <laughs> Ledger, show us a T wop. Give us a, uh, give us a little T wop across the uh, room. You can ask the youngest person on the show to do that. He'll he'll know the dances. Flo, can you... <laughs> yeah. So why do you spend all your time learning about interest rates and like uh, and debt and shit? Aren't you supposed to be doing like TikTok dances? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I got like really. I was originally like a gold bug, and I don't know why. I'd always been like into it since like a young age. I guess I like shiny the shiny rock and then in like high school i found out about bitcoin and i went like full bitcoin maxi um and then like studied all like because it was the bear market right like i bought bitcoin at like 20k at the literal top and then it was just down <laughs> for like two years but i was like really buying into the philosophy behind it so i got like super hard into like the economics and then like once like ethereum started doing like cool DeFi stuff i was like okay this is this is way more interesting so Truthy in the chat says you should blend these things and you do those educational TikTok videos. Like, so you're explaining, mm. explaining inflation on TikTok. That's, that's your way to start them right there. Yeah, no, I, I, I've thought about that before. I don't know. I'd get it. <laughs> you actually, you've actually genuinely considered I, doing I this. thought about doing a YouTube channel about just like some of these things and like basic things. Cause like in school, they teach you literally fucking nothing about like, <laughs> finance like personal finance anything it's pretty brutal so just like some basic stuff around investing and like how to try and make money when you're younger from what i understand youtube's a money printer according to you know moon carl bitboy and their personas yeah but like i don't and there's also no good crypto youtubers they're all they're all kind of uh, like ventures so i don't think youtube's the money printer i think the bybit referral link program is the money printer uh, in it yeah that's probably true yeah, it's financial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try and teach you guys um, finance. Go trade on leverage, and buy bit and get liquidated. Yeah, I heard like I don't know who told me and if it was true or not. It might this might be complete, uh, completely <laughs> false? I just made it up. But I heard that one of them, one of the top buy bit ruffling people, was printing like eight or nine figures per month uh, in referral link revenue. Like yeah, whoever's like the top top like two or three people um if so that's com that's disgusting <laughs> yeah that's for sure man per month you don't do don't do nothing you just sit there and it just prints that is... that's disturbing it's not gainsy though yeah um yeah maybe i should have had a better ref link game because I, I literally zero referral link revenue i've got one person on my bit for next revenue uh, rep, rep link from 2013 that still trades there's eight people signed up on it one person still trades <laughs> um i think it might be path uh, who knows keyboard monkey do you think the generational bottom is in generational bottom uh <laughs> whose generation my generation your generation the little guy's uh, generation flood, yeah flood flood's flood's generation, generation. <laughs> <laughs> um, no uh i mean i think we're at a local bottom probably um we had a lot of things line up you know with a lot of companies that gave earnings in the, in the stock market is what i'm talking about right now um that went from negative to positive today major one being nvidia it's snowflake which is a super high growth high valuation stock do the same type of flip even though i think it's negative now again um those snowflake. are things that definitely yeah snowflake that's a, is that on a, a SaaS company that's a, oh, that's yeah. a company it's actually, i don't know what the fuck they do but apparently it's a, a good company it's database it's database stuff yeah database it's some like, shit it's like postgres but 
fancier and scale more scalable. Yeah, and people like it. Cloudish. So we had high yield bonds bouncing. I mean, a lot of things are getting a little relief rally, and you don't go straight to zero. So I'm kind of playing a bounce here, thinking it's a local bottom, but uh, it's still not acting like super strong. And if equities just roll over and we're correlated to the downside, um, that kind of sucks. And that's like kind of what's going on, especially with ETH right now. It's super weak. What do you yeah, think? We got, um, we got the decoupling finally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Barry, Barry and Sue told us that was going to happen. It happened the opposite way. Than, <laughs> but it's still a decoupling. So you get like a point for like that, right? You get a point for the decoupling prediction. Maybe you lose a point because it was the wrong way around. So you're neutral on points. Um, for that but um yeah it reminded me in 2018 ethereum went down 95 percent in one year while the stock market continued to make new all-time highs <laughs> um well, that's a quite a nice decoupling isn't it yeah this chart doesn't look great uh no bitcoin relative to the s p yeah not good so i mean like every time we have a downtick in equities bitcoin just like high beta to that side of it and then every time we bounce it doesn't go up so not fun right now to be in crypto but uh, especially altcoins, I think those are just all zero, right? Uh, they're working that way. <laughs> yeah. what, what do y'all think about the uh, dollar dumping two weeks in a row, or the Dixie dumping, rather? Um, like, Europe finally started talking some tightening stuff, but it doesn't seem to be really changing the underlying conditions for the U.S. for, for their own tightening. So it's not like the U.S. is easing. It's just on a relative basis. Europe's finally... If I'm dumping. totally honest, yeah. I don't even know what the Dixie is. I don't know what the it's, denominator is. The US dollar measured in what? More US dollars? Is it, like, just how a, does it work? An index, yeah. I don't know either. I just let them tell me. I think it's like no a basket knows what it is. of yeah. like, it's against like euros, like the yen, like all those other currencies. It's like 55% or something like that, the euro and then yeah. the yen. And... Well, so it's like when, it's like when all the pairs on Binance, the UST pairs pumped because the denominator was just getting devalued. <laughs> but the yeah. actual thing is still worthless. Great. Cool. Yeah, um, kind of. Yeah, no, I never look at that. I mean, I guess it's good that it pulled back because we were going straight down when it was going up. But I mean, like, I don't fucking know uh, what <laughs> it's the same thing as like yields and whatnot that everything kind of chilled out. So I guess that gives us a little room for a relief rally. But hopefully uh, there's more to go because it's pretty brutal bounce and down moves eight weeks in a row, nine weeks. What is it? Uh, this is I think this would be like week eight. in Bitcoin. Yeah, it's a lot of weeks. No, I think it's one more than that. Isn't it? I think this is this week nine. I I, it's one ahead of what the stock market is. The stock market is like one less, and I think we're finally going to get an up week there. One, so, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. yeah, this would be the ninth if it closes. Oh. We got to go for double digits. That would be quite nice. <laughs> the thing is, if you get to like 15 weeks or something, next time there's like a massive bear trend. 15 weeks will be the new normal. It's like, well, we've <laughs> never had 16. <laughs> got to like, We've never had 25 in a row. Um, I looked at, I think it was the monthly chart for Ethereum or something. And it was like, since March, 2018, there was like eight Oof. red months in a, in a row for Ethereum. <laughs> Oof. Uh, That's that was a lot. Times. I'm sure there were some green weeks in the middle. Uh, yeah. Ooh, don't show that chart. I hate looking at that one. <laughs> well, he was talking about the ETH monthly. So it's here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Seven, seven red monthlies in a row. Yeah, and with and Jesus. before that too, with only one green. <laughs> <It was> just, <laughs> and even the one, that, just, um, even the one where it bottomed, you know, wicked a lot yeah. lower. So I think I might mark it out of all the positions I have just by looking at this <laughs> <laughs> right now. I like that. I like that. Flood has these like ten year, like oh, this is what's gonna happen over the next ten years, and you're like flipping bias on like depending on what chart you looked at last. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's that not is a local Cody. bottom. Everything's everything's bottoming here. This is we're gonna bounce, and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm not yeah, it's not healthy, is it? No. Uh, imagine trading that range for the past ten days. I almost fucking jumped. Out, off the balcony <laughs> but um luckily we caught this move today but yeah I, I mean like i need to go outside and touch grass and like maybe <laughs> i don't know do a lot more than that out there because this I is not healthy <laughs> i swear your i wish i could look at your um like p l net worth you know the graph on oh Netflix god don't I'd love to see that. I feel like you just go up hugely and then just grind it back down to the same level. Like the so you have access to it already. Right. You have access to it already. <laughs> 
Yeah, man. No, one of these times, uh, I'm going to stop when I'm up. I know it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> one of these times. But luckily, I'm uh, heavy diversified and like put money in shit that I can't touch or else I'd yeah, probably grind it to zero for real. You know, apparently. Well, like, well, like V tokens. Yeah, exactly. NFTs, <laughs> V tokens. <laughs> You know, I finally, um, I finally read uh, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, which I'd been meaning to read for a really long time, uh, or I listened to mm -hmm. it, rather. And it's the fiction book, but it's based on Jesse, uh, Jesse Livermore. And it's kind of this first-person narrative fiction, and the guy who wrote it wrote it based on some ridiculous number of hours of interviews. But the whole time I'm reading it, the person that it strikes me the most like is the way that you trade. Uh, yeah trading. you're not the first one to say that actually oh. and it's, uh, i've read the book but i read it like right when i started trading like 13 years ago so i don't remember it uh my friend actually told me to read it again because he had the same exact <laughs> thought so it's that's like, pretty funny i mean i've watched you trade for probably five years now and there's you know i see a lot of people a lot of people that i know like they're kind of tra trading patterns and stuff and the way they approach a market and it just the way he talks throughout the book is so much like the way i see that you do things um, Jesus, but one of them doesn't he this end up guy. like penniless and like yeah. suicidal yeah. or some shit? This is the guy that lost everything and killed himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> but he did really, really well first, you know. So you just oh no, glad you <laughs> get out while you're ahead. Um, no, um, but <laughs> it's, a lot of it's from a mentality perspective, uh, like hmm. how we approach bar. You'd be like, well, if I couldn't justify being long, well then I guess I got to be short. <laughs> 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 That, oh, please, I, I was, no more. I was selling, so then I just kept deciding to sell some more, and then it kept going down, so I sold some more. Uh, it's just, I don't know. Ghost it, shades of Jesse in my blood. It is. I think yeah. it's a compliment overall. You just got to learn from his lessons. But uh, Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been doing it for 13 years. I haven't learned yet. I'm still trying, still <laughs> learning. Um, you know, learn something new every day. Like, don't trade the fucking range after you say not to for 10 days straight. <laughs> Yeah. and lose a fuckload of money anyway <laughs> there is some, there's some really my favorite my favorite part was last year where you just like you like f full panic like I, so, someone needs to buy his nfts i'm panicking into every bid i'm just selling everything <laughs> and one day later you'll be like i'm gonna buy some nfts i bought some of those uh didn't go well for me i don't think I mean, I may technically be up from like a floor basis, but I don't think the liquidity is there. I was your exit liquidity, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think I did well selling them, but there were a couple of those uh, bounces where I was undisciplined and bought like a 300 ETH Fidenza or something that I, you know, <laughs> taking big L's yeah, on. What's the, set me back what's a the bit. least liquid NFT I could buy? Yeah. On this well, house. you get these guys, like, I mean, they, they psyops you, these Fidenza guys and other guys holding these big fucking <laughs> ticket NFTs. They really put these narratives together. I guess it's like any narrative based trading, but it's motherfuckers, they come up with some good narratives. Yeah, you just... What was the thing that hooked you into a Fidenza? What was the narrative where you went, <laughs> oh yeah, Fidenzas, this is Kobe, gonna continue I didn't, to go up. I, I didn't come on and play hardball. I don't know. Just <laughs> <let it. laughs> um, I think it was uh yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go there. He just I can't even remember. It wasn't good enough to buy three hundred ETH worth, especially when ETH was like what was it, probably like thirty five hundred dollars or something stupid. Um, he just was, yeah, that one, I'm, I'm sitting on that L. He was just really FOMOing a spiral Fidenza, you know, like it's, it's yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. mid tier, blah, blah, blah. That's the true supply story. crunch, blah, that's you know, true, some shit like that. That's the true store value. So, <laughs> yeah. Duncan, did you get rugged in NFTs or did you, were you too smart for it? Um, yeah, I kind of got rugged. So <laughs> when I first joined Delphi, I'd like never done anything with NFTs because I thought, I thought they were stupid, but people at Delphi were like pretty bullish and we had like a couple like kind of like NFT whales into so, like the first collection they shilled. I just went so overboard and like Which one? minted as much as I could. And then like four days later, after it was clear, the collection was dead. I bought like the third most rare one, which is an <laughs> alien holding a dildo <laughs> in the wow. dance club. And uh, yeah, I think that collection's at zero, but um, that, that was my answer. See, it happens to everyone. Wait, 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 you know? to be clear, there's people inside Delphi shilling other Delphi stuff. <laughs> it's like Delphi is just a paid group of nft whales getting exit liquidity on their colleagues apparently really niche one too alien dildos yeah this one was niche this one was like a clubbing <laughs> it was like a clubbing a clubbing nft or something i don't know it was it was huh. pretty pretty niche solid solid 
Is and I can't even make it my, my profile picture because it's a fucking alien holding a dildo. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna... <laughs> that seems about right for crypto Twitter. Yep. So, uh, is that the only collection? <laughs> is that the only collection you've traded? Um, and then on crypto unicorns, I bought some of those. I think those are up. I don't know. I minted a really rare one, and a lot of my friends got pissed off at me because they were like really into the game and like read the white paper, like uh, knew a lot about it. <laughs> no, I, I'm still holding it, oh, but so I, I minted a rare one. They got pissed. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah, Kobe. To, Kobe taught me this. You you gotta basically dump on day one, or else you're just gonna become a community member for like six months until they finally get a pump. And then uh, when they do, you'll be like, oh yeah, it's going to 200 ETH, and it's at 100 ETH right now. And you know you miss your chance because you became a believer in the six months while you were bag holding that rare. NFT. No, you got you mm-hmm. you've got to use day one to de-risk if you actually think it's going to do well, right? So you mint too many, you sell a bunch on day one to de-risk. And you can hold the rest if you want. You hold the amount that you would have originally minted. So it's like mint double, sell a bunch of them, and then keep the rest if you really want to hold them. I've done this successfully zero times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's like not easy to do now <laughs> or ever. Kobe's an NFT expert. Don't let him fool you. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just look his, at my gallery. His, his way food. So many. Doing so many well. things. Like, yeah, and my big and punk says. <laughs> Still have a uh, hundred of them. I just we'll bought some punks the other day. I don't know why. They're under 50 but, uh, now, aren't they? Yeah, because I sold two of them this morning already at a loss. Oh, so you like bought a week ago. <laughs> what? <laughs> so you bought a bunch. You bought a bunch, and now you're just providing steady sell pressure to prevent them from. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> No, I was like, the ETH is just better used elsewhere. Like, why the fuck am I doing this? I mean, I'm holding two still, but it's just like, I don't know. They're clearly bleeding out with every other NFT. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm pretty bearish <laughs> NFTs, but you know, sometimes the wind blows differently and you, you got to buy a couple hundred grand worth. Any, anybody holding some Goblin Towns? Uh, I, I just I dumped them. I am not. Um, I'm not endorsing Goblin Towns in case <laughs> Goblin Town founders end up being racists or other bad things yep. that nft collection right. have but cult of goblin, groomers goblin, yeah everybody else is in nft world apparently but uh goblin towns are nfts are moving uh are y'all are y'all trading them i bought no. 40 of them the other day like 0.4 0.5 and then sold them all yesterday when i listened to the spaces and they were just <laughs> making grunting. fucking noises for like <laughs> three hours they did it for like eight hours straight i mean like I, maybe i should have held because that's super commitment from the team Seems like they're committed to being goblins forever like that. But um, I, I ripped it into the bids yesterday. I couldn't couldn't stomach it anymore. I, I don't know what the hell people are doing. Did they actually do it for eight hours? Dude, like a long maybe time. longer. What, the same people? Just grunting. Just like making weird noises, yeah. But they didn't like rotate, uh, rotate a cast of grunters. <laughs> I mean, they might. They're a professional team. I feel like they could hire a cast of grumper, <laughs> grunters. You could. They're not docs, but they're like real serious guerrilla marketing and socials. I think they might have hired some grunters to That's rotate. That's a bear, bear market job for Gainsey. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's just in the in the spaces doing his grunting. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. If it, if it was legitimate, like a dude and his wife and kids are in the other room, and he's just like, sorry, I've got work. <laughs> I don't even know what I'll be. <laughs> I'll be out in a minute, and they're just grunting into his oh, yeah, the fiber, fiber gig tonight. <laughs> Not sure about that. Um, I think they also looked ugly, but if I think they look ugly, that means they're just going to go to infinity. So who, who even fucking knows? Um, did any of you own any Miladies? I did not. No. No. Kobe, you told no. me you told me like you better sell your Miladies, and I was like, wait, I own Miladies. <laughs> <laughs> did you find them? No, I don't have any. I never minted it. Don't you remember there, there was, I remember a screenshot from Telegram. Oh, where... no. I know what this was. You inspected... Oh, yeah, I photoshopped your name. <laughs> yeah, <onto laughs> you put my name on Gamesy or somebody. No, it, it, was, was, somebody. On, uh, it was on Russell. It okay. was on Russell. But it wasn't, you, yeah. you photoshopped my name onto somebody else and then you tweeted it like I meant so it. So it made it look like you were talking about the stripper. Yeah, and then you convinced, mm. yourself, and then you convinced yourself that it was true. So you thought yeah. I had the ladies, you're like, better sell those, bad team. I was <laughs> like, I don't even know that. I kind of was starting to like them ladies right before they did the uh, the pedo stuff. I mean, I was literally yeah, about they, to buy one maybe. <laughs> it was, it was weird, right? Because like, 
it was because it, it did manage to take a life of its own yeah but then the stories were just so bad that i was like mm, probably probably don't want to put one of these as my profile picture anymore <laughs> it's like a weird <laughs> like what was it like pedophile grooming self-harm cult mm-hmm. group that's been operated for like several years maybe even a decade or something so i was like yeah that that does seem quite bearish because you know, there's a signal if you put as your profile picture and very quickly they just disappeared from the timeline i didn't even um, know what the term grooming meant it was so freaking gross man uh I, as a fluff owner no <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> bring it. Bring your shots. I'll take them. Sorry, you don't, sorry. Own, you don't own fluffs anymore, do you? Do you still own fluffs? I own plenty of fluffs still. I Is this is this just like reputation management? No, I easily have done like but simultaneously have made money and have kept holding fluffs and fluff derivatives and have done better on their like group of collections than anything else in NFTs. Which brings me to say, whatever everybody tells you, like the crypto Twitter popular stuff are always the worst ones. Like, oh yeah, I don't buy that shit. I don't buy that shit. But if they give you crap, crypto Twitter NFTs never they never do well. Literally never works. But. If uh, if everybody hates them, it's probably going to do great. So I'm very happy being a fluff owner. And I like at this point, I could hold them as like the remaining ones to zero, and that's fine. But the and you will. But the, yeah, well, they're still releasing derivatives and stuff that are worth like more than my cost basis on them. So I don't know. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, Kobe had said it once in the past when we were talking about penguins. It's like if it's hated and the, the community like galvanizes together, you need it to be hated for it to like work. It's like a lot of people hate board apes. There you go. They just go up. It, yeah. You need the hatred to fuel just, the community to did, stick together and not sell. That's like a little cr- click, you know? Did y'all see there's a, a board ape fast food restaurant now? Yeah. You get like a board okay. sloppy Joe or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It didn't look great, but I don't want to talk shit. Yeah. I do enough of that to the it's apes. Just an, it's just an incredible uh, community. Like they're so diamond handed, you know, like they just... So many of them, I mean, I, I know they trade, but so many people held through all of it, like the ape coin drop, all the derivative drops, and they still have their apes. And they're like, I think it's a little bit like what you were saying with the fluff, though. They keep really, they release so many derivatives, they make it really easy for you to hold, hold yeah. to zero mm-hmm. because they just make you rich on the other shit that way you can sell it. It seems like that has been the, the main successful model for NFTs, right? Like everything that's done well yeah. since 2021 has been sort of a like, if you own this, we'll give you free stuff to sell in the future. Um, and we'll give you it, we'll like sell it lower than the prices market can bear so that it's more likely to go up, um, which creates some sort of like um, reflexive, these things always go up, so I'll mint them, which makes the original holders even richer. Yeah, um, I just think there's a certain point where that would stop working with me. I think know? it just did yeah, for the It's the land. No? <laughs> yeah, like a <laughs> hundred a- fucking thousand <laughs> units of land at 2.5 or whatever might be it. Yeah. <laughs> that might be uh, the killer. I mean, like, it's hard to overcome that kind of supply. Did you end, but... up, did you end up catching the short on that keyboard monkey with the... Eight uh, point? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did pretty well on it. Uh, like I shorted it on the way up and then luckily got out cause I had to go to sleep, I guess. And that's the day it ripped up huge and people were giving me shit the whole time, but I wasn't even short. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I caught the top pretty much and held it for, uh, many points, but not all the way down. So it went to like seven bucks or tw- from 20 something to seven. Yeah. I mean, like it, it was just obvious. Like what was the valuation up there? It was like 20 billion or something. Like well, and the only yeah, reason maybe hold it was for the, they didn't actually yeah. come out with any reason to hold it beyond the land. That's the other thing. Like what? As soon as the what? land sale. It's like over. literally a nothing coin. It's just the land sale. The land sale thing is really weird. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, it's really weird because it seems bad for everyone involved. They made people buy this currency to buy <laughs> the land, right? So like they just added additional fees like an additional additional work and to pump the price of this ape coin shit so that people can buy land. They could have just bought an ETH and the, the buyers would have been just as happy. But then they received ape coin at like an extremely high valuation. So they have a tax obligation at like where ape coins worth what 400 million or whatever it was um, when the payments went through. Now the and they locked their own ape coin for a year. So every all the ape coin they got paid 
whoever it is, Yuga Labs or whatever, they, it's locked for a year, so they can't do anything. And it's gone down like 80% or something. So now the remaining money is l less than their tax obligation. So on this land sale, they make zero. <laughs> they make yeah. negative money. Yuga? They, no, they were like, they were live dumping. They were locked. No, they really? locked for I a year. It was locked. They, I think it was locked. It's locked for a year. Maybe they hedge on perps or something, but yeah, they did um, something because they're yeah, yeah, they definitely did something. There's no way. You would hope because they did it when they uh, like when mutants uh, dropped, they sold that ETH immediately. So they would they figured something out to do that. I would presume. Uh, Who knows? You know what I think a, I think a better land Ponzi would be for some of the NFTs is to make people earn it. So like you. You get the land oh, for God. free, but in, <laughs> instead <laughs> of a drop, it's like a hold period or like network activity, something like that. But preferably, you have to farm your land. Yeah, you farm your land, and then after oh. like, because if, if if you hold one NFT in one wallet for like two hundred days, then you earn land, or like that's progressively more rare land, or something like that. As you do that. Listen, I hear what you're saying, but also, if you zoom out one additional step and ask the question why yeah <laughs> okay so i i think you're i mean <laughs> yeah go ahead mr delphi bring it in okay no no for this stuff, i want to see like projects that have supply that's not just like a fix like ten thousand supply or like hundred thousand and like actually can expand because like if you think like punks or bored apes are going to like actually be like a global thing it's like ten thousand such a small number right or like punks like ten thousand such a small number and like that's like being in like this super sports car category of like Bugattis versus like. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be a worldwide thing. No. So like a Ferrari. I think 10,000 is fine. Like <laughs> NFTs expand horizontally. I mean, like these, these collections don't have to expand like vertically in price to perpetuity. Yeah, so. It would be cool if there's like different ways like to mint them or expand and supply a different way. Or like you that's do an action. That's what and Mew was, right? Yeah, yeah, there's 20,000 there. there. You got the dogs. Then you got these coda things. I mean, so they're, they're inviting the right. supply with different shit. And that's how, even how MeBits was like punk owners got one right and then it was a public mint for the other 10,000 I think mm -hmm. I mean okay, I think I in question. general I got a question on this topic so if a NFT collection has 250 NFTs or 500 NFTs like a small number would and let's say they're worth one ETH each so it's 500 one ETH each 500 ETH market cap, would increasing the supply to 5,000 make the price of the NFT go up or down? Uh, I, I think you can now have a bigger community. Like, that's the thing. It's like with just like 10,000 collection or a small number collection, like the community can't be that big. Because if you don't own one, then like you're not going to be part of the community. 10,000 is like for, for now is reasonably big, right? Like yeah. your entire feed can just be... But like if it's 500 or 250 or something, it's so small that you don't get this, you, you, you don't have this like advertising mechanism or something. Yeah, no, I um, think it definitely needs more than 250, 500. Those are like those generative collect collections are all that big and like they have those initial pops when people are advertising them. But then there's, like you said, there's not enough people to keep continuation and they always just sell right back off, I feel like. Man, I'm there like, is like a critical yeah. mass number to make it work. I'm like super coping with my avid lines. There's only 500 avid lines, and it's not like yeah, like, like you know, Artbox, just... Artbox curated had a better network effects because it was all curated until they started releasing a new collection every like three days. Um, but something like avid lines, where it's 500 of them, then uh, there's just not enough network effects of people that can be interested. But yeah, I agree with that. I'm coping. Also, with wasn't it just a wasn't it? They weren't well, they ugly? They're awesome. I, uh, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally that's what it's I art. I know. Sorry, I'm thinking about the one, the ringers. Uh, I think about the you're ringers. gonna make yeah. a lot of people mad with that one too. Yeah, yeah you're gonna make There's more people, people spending mad. hundreds of millions on ringers out here, or not. Tens when of ringers, millions. the ones where it's just like a line around some circles. Yes. Mm, <laughs> yeah, kind of. And it's, it's like that, black uh, line. Sometimes a bit of yellow on it. Yeah, and sometimes they look like a, a duck or a goose or something. I think somebody bought well, people one. People actually thousand really like them, like non ironically, like they think that looks good. It would appear so. I At thought it was just one us. of the early ones or something. So people said it was Lindy or some shit. I think it's a mixture, but I think people do actually like them as like generative art and like uh, 
some creative concepts and whatnot. There's hmm. there's a lot of stuff with ringers, you know. Hmm. Well, I was just um, <laughs> uh, turning my Avid lines into sound panels, um, so it's going to be very expensive sound panels. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> it's just like my way of coping. Uh, you know, to each their own. Yeah, I mean, so much generative art like looks so similar. It's kind of hard to. I don't know. For me, it's just hard to like ascribe value to one collection over another. I mean, you have like the artists, I guess, but it's just a lot of it looks really similar. Like even with Fidenzas, like there's like a fun fucking tons of shit that looks like Fidenzas. So why am I gonna pay, you know, hundreds? Of if you went one? to a, if you went to like a dinner party or something, or like a, you got invited to a party or you got invited to someone's house, you don't really know him very well, friend of a friend, mm. and there was a framed Fidenza on the wall, what? What would your opinion of that person be? <laughs> uh, a real man of culture who, who knows how to take losses. Get <laughs> <laughs> for the art. No, I mean, oh, like, yeah, they're yeah, nice, obviously. They got, they got, they That's got a ringer. Yeah, so this is yeah. a ringer. It currently costs 92 ETH, so 180 grand. Yeah, I mean, it uh, mean... seems like a lot <laughs> to me. You could do a lot with 180 grand in real life. I don't know if like NFT people seem to forget about that, like we all do. But like, you can do a lot with like <laughs> that much money. Um, I forgot about it for a while. I have issues with that, but you know, this is currently the cheapest ring. Right? <laughs> it is uh, 42 ETH, so like 77 thousand dollars. Bargain. Yeah. And it is five black dots, one yellow. I dot. mean. People That's are gonna be not, mad at us for this one. It's nice. Is it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. It's cool. I don't know. Don't, I don't know. Don't you just? It, we, we just got much lower to go. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think so. That there's just like a lot more to clear out because it's pretty uh, speculative. I would say. I don't know how people don't, can't agree with that. Like. The only reason it's taken so long is just like there's super low liquidity in a ten thousand collection or a thousand collection. It's gonna take a while to bleed. But uh I don't know. Hmm. What about alts? Are there any alts you like? I know nothing about I mean, NFTs. I'm not big on them personally. I mean like I I don't know. No, I guess the answer would be it's like it's it's tough because they're like a lot of them are so inflationary, a lot of them are just made as like, you know they have no use case realistically. It's kind of just like a lot of them solve problems that don't exist. They're just like, they, it's just not something I'm focused on personally. But um, would, would you include like the layer one trade in that, like Solana and AVAX and stuff? Or would you limit that mostly to kind of app tokens or DeFi tokens or whatever? Yeah, I mean, the layer one trade obviously went bust as well. Um, it just maybe everything was super overvalued and uh, that's finally coming to fruition. I mean, I think there's obviously a little more value in Solana AVAX type things and app tokens and all that shit um, that's going to get inflated to perpetuity and doesn't really have a use case. It's like all this thing works well when it's a bull market and speculative bubble and people can just spin narratives all day. I mean, I got caught up in narratives as well, um, just like everyone else. And uh, as soon as, you know, things change and turns into bear market, you see like, you know, the Empire, the, the emperor really doesn't have any clothes on, on, on any of these. So it's kind of uh, tough sledding in the alt world. I, I'm not a person who's trying to buy any of this shit down personally. You get enough uh, beta if you want up ETH and Bitcoin trying to buy it down. It's like crypto exposure in my opinion. I don't think you need to uh, branch off into speculative crazy shit currently. I like that Like the further down coin market cap or coin gecko or whatever you go, the stupider you feel when the market turns around because like when it's a bull market you can convince yourself like oh well look they're building <laughs> this thing they're building the fucking and you, you get yourself into it you're like yeah i'm a genius look at what they've built this is this is going to change everything um people are definitely going to take their loans uh on this platform and the loan's just going to pay itself back so <laughs> people could just get these loans that they never have to pay them back it pays itself back that is the future. No one wants to pay their loan back, do they? So that's a great feature. Um, and then a bear market comes around and like Bitcoin, when it goes down, you're like, mm, okay, maybe it's kind of stupid. I bought a Bitcoin for 
for like seventy thousand dollars. That was like maybe a little bit dumb. And then you got like Ethereum. It's even dumber. It's like wait, I built it was like the world computer. Like this, like this, <laughs> people have just completely stopped using it <laughs> within six months. And I bought the gas for the world computer. That's why. I, but then you get down to like the the like tail end, and you're like. What was I doing? What are these things? These are compl- it, it's sobering, sense. really. Yeah, it gets real sobering, let's, huh? Let's play a game. This is one of my favorite metaverse coins I like to watch. It's called oh boy. The Sandbox Sand USD. Okay. The, the, the game is who can get the closest to Sand's current fully diluted valuation? And $2 billion. This is currently down 84% from its all time high. It's probably still like 8 billion or something. All right. So I reckon reckon it's 1.6. Kobe, 1.6. Keyboard monkey, 8 billion. I'll go 8. Yeah. Flood, what do you got? I'll go like in the middle, like 3. Ah, Flood is the winner. It is $4.157 billion uh ftv with a 1.7 billion dollar circul- circulating so people that's should sell yeah. 1.7 billion there's 1.7 billion dollars worth of this where people are like yeah i'll hold that <laughs> yeah. a, i mean you're seeing that across the board even in like the stock market with high growth companies everyone's just getting sober at the same time I mean, you still look at the valuations they are down like 90 percent. it's still like 10 billion valuation and like holy fuck like people are paying 150 billion for this or like 50 billion I think everyone just forgets how much a billion dollars was too. Not only the guys doing ringers for 180k, I mean, like all of that's a lot of fucking money, like realistically. But uh, valuations seem to have gotten away from us a you bit. Know, XRP and... still trades at 19 billion dollars. That's crazy. I mean, like everything. Yeah. It was all just liquidity games at the end, huh? Hmm. Momentum. Like I definitely what does do. Delphi guy, you know about what I, I don't. What I don't do? do NFT stuff, but I think well, it's, like a, NFT. it's, it's NFT? like a metaverse, metaverse game. Oh, right, yeah. So I think sure. SoftBank it's... invested in it. <laughs> SoftBank. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like the ja- like the Japanese. Does it have a working mm-hmm. product? I think yes, it has a it very does. basic one. Yeah, it's, it's pretty like basic, a, but it is working. A really shitty Roblox or something. Yeah. It's a yeah, decent that's a good description. Roblox. Yeah. But like, yeah, I agree. There's like so much garbage and it's really difficult. Like, like you're saying keyword monkey, like when you go down to like, okay, actually, how am I going to value this? Even like a lot of the layer ones, like it's a pretty tough case to value them just based on like transaction fees, especially if like, uh, it's super cheap. So then you have to start looking at like MEV or something, but even like the most generous predictions for like MEV on a chain like Solana, don't put it like anywhere near, uh, it's valuation right now. But like, I do think that there's like certain alts that are like kind of been taken out uh, just like with general liquidity drying up that actually like have some sort of product market fit or like a, pr- a path to profitability in the future. And it's difficult to see cause like all these revenues are like so reflexive, like the revenues just like disappear instantly. But I think like given like the funding in the private markets is so hot right now um, compared to like the public markets. I talked about this last time, but like I think we're entering the kind of liquid venture stage where like everything's been kind of kicked down really hard. You just have to like look for projects that actually are kind of like category leaders. So like something like a Lido is down like a lot. And that's like, if you believe in ETH long term, (laughs) obviously like I know it's Kobe's bag, but like it's, it's a great example of something that like they have a monopoly over like the staking industry. Um, they're down, like they peaked out at like $6. They're down to like 80 cents. Uh, they have like 30 percent market share of ethereum staking is it not it's yeah, like th- having 30 percent market share of ethereum, of ethereum stake is now apparently bad so <laughs> <laughs> like if it yeah. goes up it's bad if it goes down it's bad Fuck. so <laughs> that's an example another one could be like maple finance they're doing like under collateralized loans uh they're like the market leaders there they do loans for like all the trading shops and now they're starting to onboard like bitcoin miners so like real world companies to get like access to credit like on chain um, from like a higher pool of capital and obviously like under collateralized loans of the future, not like the over collateralized loans. Uh, and then like there's some other ones I like that are like not as market leading, but like you can kind of pick out some, some specific ones that the whole market's been like killed, but like, do these, are these going to be around for like next cycle or if they have a really strong market position then you can pick them up a lot cheaper than what's being funded in the private markets. Like I think layer zero, someone just announced like layer zero got funded at like 3 billion 
and like Delphi's an investor in them. Like, I think that it's a great project, but there's also like public market comps that are trading at like 300 million, like something like a, a Synapse. And I think like that's where there's like a big disconnect in the market right now. And as liquidity um, like keeps on being like drawn out of like Bitcoin and stuff, you'll, you'll start to pick up these like really interesting opportunities. I think that the, the product market fit for, I think there's like a maybe five to 10 max projects that actually practically have it. And everything else is like built on, like they're built on sand, right? And the, the, the sand is Delicious Ethereum. Sand. <laughs> <laughs> the, sand, the sand is Ethereum. So like Ethereum goes down and their revenues go down, their TVR goes down. So their implied valuations go down even more. Um, and at some point the whole thing just doesn't work. Like people don't want to use them without um, incentives. Yeah. Whereas there are, I think maybe like five to 10, maybe even just five projects where people use them no matter what, right? Like they're, they're staples or they're vital to the ecosystem. Um, Curve. And it, Arvin. yeah, Curve's a, Curve's a good example and Arv's a good example as well. But um, like they're the, this is sort of the first time this has happened, right? Cause like 2017 altcoins, everything went to absolute zero and never came back. Um, you know, some stuff like survived ish, but never really outperformed its 2017 top, especially against um, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, and same 2013, everything completely got wiped. It was, you know, um, just loads of people experimenting with um, stuff and none of it ever worked, none of it gained any traction. But this time, there are a few things that seem important and they can be outcompeted. Um, and they might completely lose all their users and no one will ever use them again. Um, but it would require the, like the Ethereum thesis or the whatever chain it's on thesis, um, to have failed as well. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see what happens with those. I know there's a company, I can't remember its name and they did an ICO in 2017 and their token is at zero. Like it's just, it pumped in 2017. It, went down 2018 and traded sideways virtually at zero in 2022. Um, didn't even pump in 2021. But the company that issued the token, their revenues are like insanely high. Their annual revenue is higher than the token market cap. Their equity valuation is insanely high. So it might be the same, right? Like maybe Curve's token is pointless and people keep using Curve forever anyway. Um, but maybe there can be some value accrual back to the token um, and things might be different um, next time around. Yeah. Um, so I think that'd be quite interesting to see. I have no idea how it goes. Yeah. Just blame what? the government for that. <laughs> like, I mean, <clears throat> wouldn't the pathway to getting value into the token be pretty clear without regulatory issues? Well, you just return revenue to holders. Right. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's not always clear that that's even the best way to to do things, right? Like you, you kind of want to do that when the protocol ossifies, I think. Like if Curve is never going to be changed ever again, it's just stuck immutable on chain, then maybe. Um, but Why would it have to be uh, never to change again to make it only then worthwhile <laughs> delivering revenue to the token holder? Well, it's like you say, like Amazon pays all revenue as dividends to all stockholders or something. And then like Amazon just bleeds out of con company reserves. They can't use that money to grow. They can't use that money for anything in the, in the future. And like if Curve issued all your revenue to token holders and then got a major competitor, but had no um, uh, like treasury reserve or whatever no, to, I think that's, um, that's to too, compete. That's way too binary of a governance structure. So the first company that I worked for was employee owned. So the CEO, janitor, whatever, they were all equal holders of profit based on a percentage of their salary. So like merit earned you your position and your salary. And then the profit share was based on a percentage of that, but everybody would earn tw say 20% bonuses or something. 
And the way they structure that in order to have retained earnings and whatnot would be the first six or eight percent or something of gross profits would just go to straight to retained earnings. And then profits beyond that would be split 50-50 between additional retained earnings and that bonus structure to employees who were part of this employee-owned company. So in that scenario, in a token model, you still are building retained earnings for the protocol and for the development of the protocol, but you're also paying uh, a reward that's directly correlated to overall net revenue to the token holders themselves. And then if there's ever a period of a deficit, then the deficit is paid back in the good times uh, while the protocol works off of reserves. I think that could work for uh, tokens as well. Yeah, I think there's some tokens that are starting to do that, but it's definitely like one of those things where if people can't see like a clear path to value accrual for their token for your token, then like it won't go up and like you won't build a community. So like you have to balance that between like yeah, like a tech company that wants to reinvest in growth, which like all of these companies are like don't want to give back all the revenues to to token holders, so they're just like constantly like financing through more like token sales or, or equity, but um. Yeah, like you need to find a, a balance between giving like the token a value accrual or a path to value accrual in the future, and then also being able to like fund your operations. Um, but yeah, like I agree a lot with with what Kobe was saying earlier around like 2017, 2018. It was just kind of all this big imagination trade, and there was like nothing tangible in alts that that you could really like attach like any sort of valuation to, or even just like almost a working product. And then that's like started to change slowly. And there's been like so much in funding that's come into the space. Like I think it's like over 40 billion in the past, like 18 months or two years has come into the space. So like, you're going to start to build out like real businesses that can uh, accrue value and, and like live on chain. And I think that's like starting to, to happen now, but it just takes time. And we need like a lot more consumer facing apps because like it's still a pain in the ass to like do anything on, on one of these blockchains. Do you think value accrual to token holders sets a floor and do you think it sets a ceiling? Yeah, so definitely um, there, yeah, I think it sets a floor and a ceiling. Like, I guess it depends what stage in the market you're in. Uh, like, obviously, like, the imagination trades can take off really hard when you're in a bull market. And also, everything's like really reflexive, including revenues uh, in the bear market. But I think that if you want to have like a solid investor base, like they need to see there's a path to, to like having earnings here. So like a token I really like is like GMX. It's like one of the only DeFi tokens that I actually think makes more money naturally than they give away in incentives. Like it's really hard other than like, well, Uniswap doesn't make any money because all the fees go to LPs, but like almost every other big DeFi product, you know, like is losing a shit ton of money paying out token incentives that they don't need. But like GMX actually like on net makes money. And that's like a project where like they on net make money and like give 30 or like 30% of the money they make to stakers and then 70% to liquidity providers. So like, I think that's like kind of the optimal model where like you can put like some sort of price to earnings around them. Uh, they're making money over uh, like over token holders, but then obviously you don't get that um, like big imagination trade that you would for like an L1, like a Solana. Or like an avalanche, or like this could be the big next thing. Uh, did anyone trade the thing where you got buy a shoe, a digital shoe? Oh, now we're talking Step my in. language. Stepping. Yeah, stepping. <clears throat> yeah, no, uh, one of my buddies started doing it when the GST was like 15 cents and obviously brushed him off. That would have been a generational wealth on walking to earn, <laughs> but I missed out on that. But yeah, I've been, I've been messing with it. It's had a bad day today though. <clears throat> um, yeah. It's one of the first things I've seen, like, besides NFTs, like normal people who aren't in crypto, like they all get it and want to be onboarded into it. Um, my wife does it like every day. She took a huge pay cut today, I heard, with uh, GST down 40%. So that's unfortunate. Ex it goes to zero. Exercise. That'll, that'll, that'll be a layoff. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you bought the shoes? <laughs> yeah. So you buy the shoes. It's like, it's all in Solana. And it costs like, I, I guess they dropped a lot today, but it was like 10 soul for a shoe. And then they had like this whole Ponzonomics, like tokenomics, like it's a game, but they just have sinks built in everywhere to burn these GST tokens. And then you walk to earn the GST tokens. The more shoes you have, you can earn more for longer. There's like a, 
It's like a huge Ponzi, but I guess it's falling apart today as we speak. So it's unfortunate. Someone in, someone in the chat said, Stepan is a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. Yeah, it's a Ponzi <laughs> scheme that the creators can like do a lot of tweaks <sighs> once something breaks. So I'm hoping that uh, they fix it and fix make it better. Someone, because someone, uh, I think today they banned China or China banned it. China doesn't want their people making money walking. So well, someone just messaged then. me saying that the developers have been arrested in China for yeah. fraud and running a Ponzi scheme. Is this true? No, I think it was just banned in China. But I mean, like, I haven't looked into it that far, but that's what I saw that it was banned there. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think the thing with all these games is like you need some sort of like supply sink and like some, <laughs> some sort of category of net spenders. So like the game has to be fun in a sense. I think like this the, one is. I mean, they have yeah. it here. They definitely have lightning in the bottle, but like, it's still not going to overcome the inflation of doesn't, GSP. So, so doesn't it just it just needs new people buying the shoes to make the current shoe holders make money? <laughs> well, That's all you need. That's all. You it's need. just like admissions. You you, you walk you walk in and admit admits GSP tokens to your wallet. Then you just like instantly swap that for USDC. How does it actually track? Is, yeah. is there a tracker in the shoe that's connected? To yeah, you? dude, there's a tracker. It's like pretty. It's you can't really game it. Um, but, but there's no like net selling, there. They're gonna be there's, selling. There's there's tons of sinks to upgrade shoes or gems and level your shoe and repair it and all this shit. It's like tons of token sinks for GSC. But I mean, like, I'm not saying it's gonna work, but it it was working for a while till China banned it. But. <laughs> Oh, I don't care. I was going to ask some questions. But I, just, <laughs> yeah. I just don't care. It. Yeah, no. I think it's just a fun way for like people to fuck Spend around and learn market. about Solana and like pass the bear market, earn a couple dollars, play hot potato during the Ponzi scheme, and hopefully not lose it all. But if you're holding into today, you lost. Are are, oh. are people already creating clones for like other activities? Is there like golfing now? I heard there was sleeping. Sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I heard uh, that. Well. Track your sleep. Like it was fucking like VC backed, and like I don't know. You sleep a perfect <laughs> night. I saw, you one, get, like, I saw one that said well wellness to earn. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was wellness to earn. I don't know if you got to meditate or what. Um, but. I can't think of anything like more let's juxtaposed than wellness to earn. <laughs> like sit there. Literally. The chat has some creative um, ideas about some activities. Yeah, you can get really creative with this shit. It sounds Is like it all just wanking. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Jerking. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Pooping? That's a good one. You know, I don't know where you put the tracker. Um Yeah, I don't know. Oh, this is bear market activity. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a fun little side quest mini game, you know, <laughs> but, uh, I guess it's easy to lose your money in those too. So you gotta be careful. Uh, <laughs> so that's what he said. Brand new trend is work turn. <laughs> Actually get a job. Uh, I had brought this up because you're based on what you're talking about earlier. So apologies. This is a spreadsheet. Um, but in terms of apps that have real revenues and uh ens hit a eight million dollar month in may so far so it's probably gonna be in, it was a couple days ago so probably gonna be like a 10 million dollar revenue month for ens which would put them on a rate of 120 million not counting uh future growth and their fully diluted valuations one billion dollars so that's an example it's like not even 10x price to sales um and the thing is, I don't, it's not, it's, it's not an equity. It's not a security. So it's not like that's getting back to those token holders. I don't believe. I think it's just, a is it not a security though? Uh, well, it, it, I guess it would be if, if they were doing the things I, would, I was saying earlier would be good. But um, isn't it? Is it so already? token holders just get fucked though, like constantly just yeah. cause they can't like <laughs> share in any of this. It's like, oh yeah, you buy ApeCoin. All these people think they own fucking equity in Yuga Labs. No, I mean like. They, they don't. They just don't. Ape. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's like constantly like that. I don't know. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I guess it is a lot of regulatory base shit too, that they can't like, you know, give out dividends to people. But the anonymous no, wanna... team premium. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Like, yeah. I think GMX trades it like a seven times, like price to earnings, like paid out in ETH, like in real time. Yeah. That one seems solid. It's been doing well too, right? It's, it's yeah, an well, Arbitrum, I think. Yeah. It's, it's held up pretty well. Is there many? Is there many things that just pay out like in stable coins or pay out in Ethereum or pay out yields in like not in inflation, not in like native? No, the, well, that's the thing. It's hard to find these projects. So like when you find them, mm. that's why I think they're interesting. Like there's just so many projects that are just paying out way more inflation than actual. Yeah, like, looks earnings. rare. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> they do both, right? They, yeah, they do do both. No, not allowed to bring that one up around COVID. No, like, yeah. <laughs> well, they just do. They just, uh, they sell their tokens and then issue the sale proceeds to existing token holders. Yes, While also, but, but your rewards are both inflation of the token and the ETH. But if you took mm. out the inflation of the token and you rewarded ETH from trading, then it would be a more organic version of like ETH-based gen uh, revenue generation, which would be fine. But okay. while there's high inflation and also um, whatever, like wash trading to encourage earning the token up to some value, that's why like the same MeBit trades like 50 times a day. Um, because somebody's just yeah, it's just back and it's, forth. they're just selling. But it's just an ongoing sale of yeah. But they have had an yeah. uptick in like native volume as well, especially with aggregators, um, where they're showing up in those order books as kind of a first class citizen to purchase in. So yeah, I've used it a few times when I don't want to give a royalty to the uh, to, to the, the collection. To the <laughs> <team>. <laughs> like I want to sell all this shit, but I don't want to give a royalty to the the person that created this. So. Then I go use it there because they don't have them turned on, which is <laughs> it's, it's niche. Yeah, didn't niche that Zagabon, that Zagabon guy, like he had a collection that people were wash trading and he saw that whales were wash trading it and he jacked up the royalty fee to smoke them for like $2 million one day. <laughs> like it was down looks rare. Yeah. It was one of the, like the, the many things that he did to piss people off. But I thought that was pretty hilarious. I mean, unethical, of course, but wait, who is Zagabon? It's a dude who, like, is a uh, Zuki founder that people, like, got all up in arms uh, about because he was okay. a serial, like, rugger, I guess. Well, rugger in the sense that, like, he creates projects and moves on and if they fail until he hit a Zuki. But, yeah, he, he had a collection on Luxray that had 0% royalties and whales were wash trading and he jacked it up to scoop a mil and a half off him or something. Wow. So he... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, when somebody said that he was the founder of Tendies, I was like, the DeFi project? But apparently there was a NFT no. Tendies as well. So yeah. that was the drama there. Did Azuki, <laughs> did Azuki recover? I really like Azuki, so. I think it bounced and sold back off, like all these things. Um, I don't know. It seems like a, a tough moment in the profile pick space. So not great. Has what Apes dumped or is it still oh, eternally yeah. going up? Was that 90 or something? Yeah, I don't know if that's high or not. It was at 150 before yeah. the land sale, um, but I mean, oh yeah, it's, it's not done too bad then. It's not even. No, nah, with it, I mean, they get like a dividend off the land sale of like an average of like 10 ETH or something, I guess. So it's still pretty bad. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, it did all right, given that everything else is down like 90 odd percent. That's not yeah. too bad to only be down like 40 percent. No, they, they've still crushed, obviously, and with all the dividends they've gotten, I think they're still a. Uh, free rolling i do think it's a bit weird that there's like um a complete disconnect from uh projects that have like actual traction and their valuations and their like use and then just like random like things going to infinity that don't make any sense yeah just like the like a consensus imagination traders duncan said like uh like just uh, I don't understand it, and maybe it's just euphoria, signs of the top, you know, signs of frost. Um, when that starts happening, exit. But um, or maybe it's like a symptom of this like post meme stocks era type thing, where like people just play chicken with um, with something. It's going up, so they momentum trade it. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. my least favorite thing. <laughs> I think with, it's, it's just a sense of stupidity and you're like, I don't know how to, don't know how to play yeah. in this environment. I, I think with the L1s, like still in the imagination trade, like it was like so early and obviously like Ethereum's not at its like end state for scaling that people were just like, okay, like we're going to value this relative to Ethereum. And like, yes, yeah, Solana can be like two, 3% of Ethereum's market cap or like Avalanche can be, or like, BNB like can be some percentage of Ethereum's market cap because it has like that percentage chance of like actually being like a dominant scaling solution. But like I think since the technologies are like so still so young and like they're not at all at like what mass adoption will look like, people are just kind of like grasping at anything that like looks cheap on, on a relative basis. And so it's not so much valuing them based on their own merit versus just like what it looks like relative to to the rest of the market. Yeah, and everyone pins to the the highest value one, so everything gets super inflated. Yeah, 
Yeah, if, that makes sense. So you, you got your, sorry, Lois, after you. I was just going to say, if Ethereum has less activity as people, you know, just slowly <laughs> exit the market from an attention perspective, number stops going up on all the derivatives of things on Ethereum, then the Ethereum fees go back to a much more manageable state. Isn't that just highly reflexive on all the L2s and all L1s that they'll likely have like massive decreases in their own transaction counts and whatnot and put additional pressure on anyone trying to, on prices due to people trying to do that kind of fundamental analysis of activity? Yeah, like I, yeah. I think that that makes a lot of sense. And, and that's the thing, like everything's just like so reflexive. It's really difficult to like anchor yourself to any like Re recurring like earnings or revenues that might make people comfortable. I think like the big thing you have to look at is like are new people coming in to like use these technologies and uh, like, yeah, cause they're, they're like networks. So I guess like Raul Paul, like from Real Vision talks about this a lot, but I think it's probably like the best way to, to think about valuing these things is just about like th these are all networks and how many new people can you bring on board? And like, we still need to like cross the chasm of like, bringing on like hundreds of millions of people into crypto actually using it and what you know. what are people even using eth for anymore that now i'm thinking about it DeFi is dead nft is dead <laughs> but it's not is that why it's like all the way back to 1800 as we're speaking it's like keeps going down yeah well that's just on. yeah but like it's kind, of, <laughs> it's kind of scary when you think about it it's like honestly but, it's like i, I think that ethereum in bear market starts to feel like yeah, kind of like light lunar, where it's like, wait, no one uses this whatsoever. <laughs> like it looks more like lunar, and then in a bull market, it looks more like Bitcoin. And it's like, oh no, look, it's like a store of value, and it's like a world computer. And then in a bear market, it's like, wait, it, it, it nothing on it does anything. <laughs> it's yeah. completely pointless. Yeah. Um, so I kind of disturbing. It, in this whereas in a bear in market, Bitcoin still has its like, yeah, it goes up and down, but it it still works the same way. It's still the um, it, like it, it, its narrative remains basically the same. Um, so I, I do, I do find it funny how ref, uh, like reflexive Ethereum is in both directions. It just gets absolutely obliterated on the downside. I'm making, um, the, I'm making the chat mad because I brought up this avalanche sea chain chart, and oh it's like God, fake, right? They just like, it's just cra crab, whatever it's called, cra the crabby game, <laughs> uh, Krabata or some shit. Yeah, it migrated to a subnet. Yes, yeah, so uh, is... the C chain activity moved to subnet, so the subnet. Yeah, which is like allegedly, happen. allegedly still an avalanche, but really it's not, is it? It's just <laughs> like know. either way, the chat, the chat's it's, upset with me. It's on under the avalanche umbrella, but this kind of reminds me of all of the like Ponzi and gambling schemes that were on ETH in the last bear market that were responsible for a lot of the transactions there. Um, like if something called crabata or crab yeah. it's like that's the primary use case of the chain it's like not a particularly useful thing at least from a you know monetary perspective or like something that actually needs a blockchain um, yeah did you see that raul raul powell said that he's never like owned luna used luna never recommended luna and then like people just found a tweet where it was like who are my favorite alternative layer ones it's like luna yeah. <laughs> luna Solana. <laughs> it, was, it was very strange yeah he said something about the context of that video i couldn't quite tell because the person in the video just kept repeating the same sentence from probably like <laughs> 20 times because it was the direct contradiction to what he said but i'd have to listen to the full clip i guess if i'm going to give him the benefit his co-founder was really big on it so maybe that's why he said yeah hmm. yeah you can't lie on the internet that's uh dangerous yeah, like I could say something mm. stupid. That's like blaming Kobe for it. That's not very fair. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Right. So, Flood, you got your job at Delphi just after our podcast last time, like a year ago or so. Yeah. Um, maybe now because of this one, you'll lose your job. But, <laughs> wait, wait, um... wait, 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 wait. Before you go, is it Delphi or Delphi? Delphi. <laughs> Del it's Delphi. Mm. Delphi sounds bad. <laughs> The, right, the thing is, you just got to pronounce the stuff. Even if the founders tell you it's pronounced wrong, <laughs> just do it the way that you think sounds good. Like people say it's like Ave or whatever. It's just Av. Av is, that sounds better. So whatever, we don't care what Stanny says. It's just Av. All right. And Del Delphi, no, nah, it's Delphi. Don't care what the founders say. We're calling it Delphi from now on. Um, so Delphi did this whole big like, you know, with the tokenomics experts type um, spiel. Uh, but the Axie model is basically 
dead. They made really good Eiffel Towers, it seems. Um, and a lot of people in the chat are saying, like, you can't have a Delphi guy on not talk about Luna. So we've got to ask the question. I know you've only been there a year, and I don't even know what your job is. Uh, I just like reading your tweets sometimes. But were you near the um, the collateral damage from this? Was it like people running around the office setting things on fire? Um, what happened? Yeah, so there's three different divisions at Delphi. We have like Delphi Research. Uh, so that's like a research team. We, we write reports, post that to our different subscriber levels. So that could be like, like funds within the space or kind of like more traditional asset managers. And then also like a daily newsletter that can just like anyone can sign up for. Uh, so, so that's one aspect of the business. Then the second aspect is our venture fund where do we like invest like our own money out of the venture fund in like various venture investments. And then the, the third arm of the business is labs. And that's where we built um, Astroport or helped build um, Astroport and, and Mars on on Terra. So I guess like most of the Terra involvement was uh, through through labs, and obviously like that is is where like most of like uh, the pain was. But like research and, and ventures were were fairly isolated from from the incident. But what do you uh, what which one are you in? Uh, I'm mostly research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that one sounds the most credible. But didn't research pile out some stuff about how UST is going to like go to two dollars or something? <laughs> UST two dollars? <laughs> no, like we I think we posted like five reports on it. Um, obviously, like I guess like the 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 bigger thing that happened was like the thesis drift that happened from from when Labs decided they were going to build on. Terra to like what like where it was a month ago. So like when Labs is and we put out a post a post mortem about this. I can like put the link in the Twitch chat. Um, kind of like walking through what happened. But basically, like when Labs decided to to be building on Luna, like almost a year ago, like UST market cap was like a billion dollars, and like the main source of UST demand was from Chai, uh, which was a payments app in Korea that you could essentially use it. It was cheaper than a credit card. It settled overnight. Um, it was like actually made a lot of sense for both like the user and like the, the store. So like that was like the main kind of use case for UST and we're like, wow, like this is really cool. Uh, decentralized money with like real use case and real demand. That's like counter cyclical to crypto. Cause like, this is like $1.5 billion in, in spending volume that has like nothing to do with crypto. It's just like from kind of like S South Korean, uh, consumers. So like that was what originally brought us on. And then um, Terra launched Mirror, which is essentially like an, app, um, like an app where you could get exposure to synthetic equities through Mirror. And this was another really cool idea because it's like, okay, if you're not in the US and you don't have like a brokerage account, there's no way I can get exposure to the US stock market um, in some of these like poorer countries or, or less developed countries or if I don't have enough money. So anyone with an internet and like, or with access to the internet could get exposure to the US stock market. So that was another really cool application where we felt that did um, like real uncorrelated demand. And then Anchor launched, um, I think, I'm trying to think when it was, maybe April of last year. And it started off at a 20% interest rate as kind of like the bootstrapping mechanism. And this is when like rates across the board were extremely high. So you had like the basis trade at like 50, 60%. Uh, you had like yield farms, like triple digit yield farms. So like 20% was like somewhat reasonable. Right? Well, the triple digit yield farms were in native tokens, right? So you'd like deposit some shit and you get paid loads of like equity tokens, mm -hmm. not dollar tokens. Yeah, yeah. So I, but I guess like the yields were, were nuts back like a year ago. And then as kind of yields compress across the board, Anchor didn't lower their rate. So obviously um, they kind of kept up an unsustainable rate for too long. And like from February up until like a few weeks ago, Anchor was adding like 100 million in deposits a day just because like of this 20% rate. So I guess like that's where the the thesis drift happened. Um, like obviously we, we were wrong on that and like we took an, an L for it. And like, that's kind of what Delphi is about is like making big bets with conviction with like our own capital. Del and, like, Delphi. <laughs> Delphi is about. Del um, Delphi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think we'll be fine. And like, oh, like I, I know we'll be fine. 
And I'm really excited to see kind of like what happens next with, with the labs team. Cause obviously like it's like, instead of this happening like five years down the road, like um, it's kind of like happened now and, and we can go on to like build some, some really cool stuff. Cause we put together together like a killer team uh, like Astroport and Mars functioned really well throughout the whole um, like kind of turmoil on, on the Terra chain. So I'm excited to see what happens, but obviously uh, like it, it sucks. I think the part that I did you have in, internal dissenters? Uh, pardon? Did you have internal dissenters? Like one guy, like this is all going to fucking fall to pieces. And then on, when it happened was like, look, I don't want to, like, I know this is really bad <laughs> for the company, but I did tell you. Uh, no, it wasn't like, I think, yeah, that, there wasn't that much um, discussion. Like the, the, the different divisions were pretty siloed. So maybe there's some discussions on research about it, but that's like siloed off from labs. And like once we'd like kind of committed with labs, it's kind of like live by the sword, die by the sword. That's what the founder says. So like we committed a year ago to like build these things. And uh, it's not like you could just kind of like pull out h- halfway through. You're kind of like stuck into it. I think everyone knew that the risk existed in every single one of our reports we wrote about Luna, like we highlighted that this, this was a potential risk, but obviously like we were pretty shocked to, to see it happen so, so quickly. But it wasn't that quickly. I mean, it was like $60 no. dollars of, I mean, it, the, the fall happened quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, <laughs> it wasn't fall. like, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't like people took advantage of it when it was a much smaller protocol. It, 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 uh, it got freaking big, you know, it was a huge event for crypto. And I think, What's strange is once, th- surely somebody was speaking some degree of, of truth or risk to the Terra team, and like maybe they had some opportunities to make adjustments that would have been painful, but uh, allowed them to, you know, not spiral. I just think it's amazing what, how it was like, well, numbers gone up, so all is well, <laughs> you know, and, and the people, I, the people who, had the conviction to say this is definitely going to zero because it, it cannot catch itself. The only the only thing that had prevented it before, I guess, when it was smaller, was that centralized money came in and saved it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's funny we were at F one. I thought a uh, jump capital was going to save it this time because a, a a drunk jump market maker. We were all short Luna at like ninety, and the peg was like ninety five, and he assured us. That we need to cover our fucking shorts by Monday because it would be repegged, oh, wow. and it dropped to like twenty the next day, <laughs> and then zero the next day. He just he cost us like untold wealth, but uh, apparently they were convinced they were gonna repeg it, but it didn't work. Oof. But that was uh, a hell of a fucking call by that guy. I still I'm still mad at him as you can tell. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he was just trying to help the peg. <laughs> yeah, he must have been. <laughs> that was a strategy. Look, yeah. if you convince people to close short, so they'll go back up. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that there was like a credible path like to it being more back. Like what they were doing in the Bitcoin reserve, obviously like a really good narrative. But if you think when Luna was at a hundred dollars, um the treasury of of Terra was like three hundred, four hundred million Luna. So like market value, that's like 30, 40 billion dollars. And like if they could have organized some big fundraising rounds, like they did that one billion dollar round originally, like they could have like theoretically got the collateralization up quite a bit higher if they had some more time and then like moved off a fully al- algorithmic model into something where that was just like the bootstrap of adoption phase and then move to a model where, okay, instead of it being like I need to burn like one dollar worth of Luna for one dollar worth of UST, like I need to give like 60 cents of Bitcoin and then burn 40 cents of Luna to create one UST. So I think that there is a path in the future and like anchor worked really well for a long time as like a bootstrapping mechanism, but like just given like the general market conditions, it just like couldn't handle that stress at the time. But I don't think it would have been in, impossible for them to, to kind of figure it out. I don't well, think that, like, that's the gamble, right? You pay people in fake dollars to come onto your ecosystem. So your ecosystem gets so big that you can offload equity of your ecosystem in order to back the fake dollars, the confidence dollars with real (laughs) dollars. Um, And if you get big enough, fast enough without your confidence dollar supply getting so large, then maybe you could um, pull it off. Um, But when you sell that, like, you know, 30 billion of Luna in your fundraising to get 30 billion of Bitcoin to back 
your however many billion of UST, that 30 billion just goes to someone else and they can mint UST with it. You got the same problem all over again. <laughs> yeah. So I guess like that's why you eventually have to change the, the minting mechanism, right? Like that had to be changed at some point. Um, yeah. Because yeah, like a very similar event happened in, in May last year when you just get this reflexive cycle of, of the Luna minting and then selling and then people losing confidence and, and it depegging. So obviously it, it's difficult to avoid in these sort of models, but uh, there's definitely like time where I think people thought it was possible to, to re-collateralize and just like use this as a bootstrapping mechanism. Cause really like think about like the community that was created and also like all the developers and capital that came over to build on, on Terra. I don't think it would have been impossible for them to kind of shift away from a fully algorithmic model and be a really successful L1 given the fact that they had all these other things going for them. Did, um, does anyone know how Justin Sun's Luna clone works? Is it just the same thing or is it different? I think it's pretty similar. I think it's, it's the same, a, yeah. It's a 30% <laughs> rate this time, though. Yeah, it's is, even isn't more. it? Isn't it variable? I thought it was 30% starting rate, and it's actually got like massively diluted. Oh, no, I, I haven't looked into it. Oh, yeah, much. I just saw the start as well at 30. Can FTX list perps for it uh, or Genesis or somebody offer borrow? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, like, is it not destined for the same outcome? I don't understand. Well, it depends on how it depends on how much collateral he has for it. What, what happened, Ledger? I, <laughs> Did you just spill a drink on yourself? <laughs> uh, no, I dropped something, but hopefully I didn't I mean, stop the stream. You would hope he learned something from the Luna Collapse and that it's not possible to do, but Look, I don't know I the think, intricacies. I think, I think he, I like him. I think he's just going, fuck it. I can do yeah. this better. I can learn from the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I like it too. So therefore, but I don't know if it's collateralized or over collateralized or under collateralized. Yeah, I think that they have like a huge portion of like the TRX treasury that's like set aside for it. Oh, so, so like so the TRX to zero too. <laughs> yeah, but like th this could this could stand as like a good kind of like marketing scheme for a bit or like bootstrapping mechanism. But I think like to have a fully decentralized money like in an algorithmic way. Uh, is very difficult and like the the future of this i think will be like something like uh like a liquidity where it's like strictly eth collateral or like strictly crypto collateral or something like a like a lemma or an uma where you basically um so like you hold eth on like a decentralized exchange and then you go short like the the perp and so you're kind of like in the old bitmex days when you're in the, like the synthetic dollars and then the interest rate is the funding rate between the two so I think that that could be, those are like kind of like the, the models for decentralized stable coins going forward. The algorithmic is going to be tough. And you even see kind of like Frax pivoting away from that right now to be less associated. But I think um, something that they try to do or like want to try in the future is, okay, we'll have like 80% in like hard collateral and then 20% will be in like something like an under collateralized loan. So like the money is still there and it's like lent out to people, but it's just not on demand. And I guess like trying to, just like make use of, of that treasury in a better way. Hmm. Do you remember when Justin just decided he just became an ambassador for like something? Yeah. But then he just kept working on Tron as though nothing changed. <laughs> yeah. My friend will send me in the past couple of days have been sending me the Tron price and just saying his excellency. <laughs> yeah, people are bull posting doing. Tron nowadays. And in, in the midst of it all. So I think Light wrote a big expose on how bullish it is right now. Yeah, he did. I mean, it's just going sideways and has been going sideways since yeah. the beginning of the beginning of the month. And, uh, well, it's been going sideways since this time last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, one other thing on the Terra side of things, I didn't know this until I was trying to look up what the market cap for Terra is still because I was trying to figure out like, why is it trading and what's it trading for? Um, it says this is the original Terra has rebranded to Terra Classic, uh, and there's going to be a Terra 2.0. Do you all yeah. familiar with yep. this? Yeah, I yeah. think it's already launched, right? So, yeah, I think maybe it, it definitely been airdropped or something already. Okay. Yeah, I think this, this final snapshots are tonight, I believe. Okay, there you go. Um, all right. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't even trade Luna anywhere anymore, right? I think they took away all perps finally. Maybe you could do spot FTX, I think. Yeah, the Binance is relisting, so they're splitting it to Luna Classic and UST Classic, and then the new Luna Chain, and so they're they're relisting 
I mean, it's going to pump, right? Soon. The one I'm looking at is Wrapped Luna on Coinbase, which apparently is still trading. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Sounds promising. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good stuff. Who, who knows, man? Who knows? Um, yeah. I mean, it's all a bit of a joke, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it appears so. Once the bear market hits, you figure that out. So what are y'all... What are y'all's- how are, you yeah, gonna, my... how are you gonna survive the bear market? What are you gonna do? Keep yourself busy and not chop yourself to death, keyboard monkey. <laughs> I think it's already too late, buddy. <laughs> you saw the range last week. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I mean, like, like I said, I'm trying to get away from the screens. Uh, I just need to catch one more trade, you know. Just one more trade. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to slow down. But obviously, I, uh, I chopped myself up already in the range quite a bit. So, uh. Just got to try to stop, I guess. Otherwise, I mean, you can't trade this market. It's super liquid. It was range bound <laughs> for a while. Uh, it's, it's garbage. <laughs> yeah. Were you just, trash, were you just I mean, buying were you buying the top of the range and selling the bottom of the range? Just I mean, a little more nuanced than that, but, you know, what those were like the, the big add-ons and shit. <laughs> I think it, like, yeah. And then just like, it just lasted too long. And I think I became like mentally unhinged. At some point, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like we could do therapy with uh, Kobe right now, I guess. But no, I, I don't know what happened. It was just bad. Just over trade, just over trading, man. I mean, like as a day trader, you need a lot of discipline, and you just you, you have to trade spots and not try to force trades. You only need one. Trade. You only need one fuck up in the range to like tilt yourself. If you yeah, like, exactly. I think that's how it if, happened. If you fuck up in like the range and then. And then the next time it moves, you're like, well, I need to fucking fix this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you're like, wait, I can't miss the breakdown or breakout. Like after all this, yeah, I'm yeah, chopping yeah. myself to death and I'm not going to fucking miss it. I mean, it's just all, it's all dumb as fuck, obviously. Um, it's an unfortunate situation. I mean, luckily I made a lot back today, but um, I would like things to keep bouncing because I am currently long. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stop trading, by the way. I'm in an active trade. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like not adding to it. I'm holding from or this morning's nuke. But uh, otherwise, I guess just trying to get outside and touch grass, maybe some scuba diving. I don't know, travel a little bit. What are you guys doing uh, past the bear market? You're looking at it. No, oh, solid. <laughs> well, Flood's got a job. He's got yeah. to do like research and shit and tell us which new algorithmic stable coin is going to go up. <laughs> Uh, find the next hundred X. That's my job. But are you uh, just finding shit that pays yield? Um, you contacted me like saying, "Can I buy something?" Let's not name what it is. Cause, yeah, no, we um, can't name it's it. Irresponsible. But you contacted me saying like, "I want to buy this thing that you." Uh, I I have like five percent of the liquid supply of something, um, and I'm like, "But it, doesn't it suck?" <laughs> like, you're like, "No, it's gonna go up." I'm like why <laughs> and you're like well yeah. i don't want to tell you why it's going to go up because then you won't sell me it at the bottom um and uh and i was like giving you all these bear arguments of like why it's not going to go up and you give me all the bar arguments except i own all of it um i can't sell it it's not liquid enough so well, yeah you can't buy you it. sell it to me <laughs> <laughs> but now if you think it's going to go up well, we already talked about. I already told you why, but I'll, I'll say anything later. We definitely cannot <laughs> mention it. This is way too much of a shit coin to mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, it's market cap is like seven dollars. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Kobe, but, what are you gonna what are you gonna do for the bear market? Um, for the I mean, last time around, I traveled for a little while. Um, stopped tweeting, which was nice. I tweet like once a week instead of once a, a minute. Um, and, um, I don't know. I think I might like try and be like healthy or something. I like it after 10 years of doing this stuff, I had this, when I f first started, I, I very clearly saw a path for Ponzi coins with a good narrative becoming a cultural phenomenon right and like either realizing valuation potential through connecting to the real world or through mass psychosis of everyone believing the same thing um and that kind of happened right like I, like it was everyone knows what a bitcoin is now um elon went on television to talk about dogecoins and stuff um 
so in some ways it feels like that 10 year journey is over um because uh like things got to kind of where i thought they could get to and like maybe it can maybe it can continue maybe not um you know definitely needs to connect a lot more with the real world than being an isolated uh on-chain casino um but there was some like sort of internal uh gr grind where i like can't stop until this thing has been realized um and now i'm like I might spend some time in the real world. <laughs> Everyone's been shot in the metaverse. I'm going to be a contrarian. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to like take up five aside football or something. Um, so um, the real world is nice. So you're talking. You're, you're calling the forever top on crypto. It sounds no, like no, it. no, no, no. Not not the forever top, but like it. Things got to roughly where I thought they could get to. Like in my like, by in my like wildest dream estimates of how well it could go, and sure it can like continue to connect to the real world and like people can on board and bitcoin can be a lifeboat for um uh people who want to avoid the monetary policy eroding their ability to build wealth um and maybe ethereum can figure out how to scale and maybe roll up to the future and they can you know defeat visa and swift and blackrock and citadel and all the evil bankers or whatever um but you know Maybe it doesn't, and that's fine as well. And I don't want to spend another 10 years sitting inside learning about all the different kinds that exist if it turns out to be the one where it was all just vaporware. And if it does connect, then I'm going to always be tuned in. So it's time to just go outside and have a nice life. I like that. Maybe have some children. <laughs> there you go. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's mine to me to sit here, I guess. <laughs> last time last time, I, last time I got a job and I like worked on something non-crypto and kept it treat crypto very much as a hobby and it was really good for me because i get really obsessive about stuff um so it was nice that it was segmented off mentally and it was a thing that i could just focus on um when it felt intellectually interesting and engaging and fun rather than something that i was like forced to look at um every day so i might like figure out something to do that feels like a job won't be a job but like you know I don't know, build a shed or something. I'd like to build a shed. I'll build my own <laughs> shed. I'll like build some, build, like do some woodworking, build some furniture. Who knows? The world is my oyster. That seems very British. <laughs> what? M making a shed? And, and yeah. Le Ledger, you already do that though. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I actually think that it's pretty valuable to not require trading and profit, profiting from trading for like your living during times where you're forcing it against in the market, it's not really amenable to that. And you have to account for if that's your thing when a bull market, you say, I'm putting everything down in a trade full time. I feel like you got to put enough for your living expenses for however many years that the market's going to suck um, in order to make that work. And you can't try to force your, you know, your whatever percent, you know, 1% per month or something that you need for your living expenses. That would be really painful. So I've always liked in the same sense could be to say i don't i don't trade for a living i don't and investing is not my job like i'm always going to have something something that i do as a career or a job or um and, and those the upside from crypto is like a high beta retirement not a uh not like something i absolutely need and that makes i've also been like peaceful yeah i i i i think that's right like you you need to have like a happy life because crypto is like quite miserable and quite engaging and like quite consuming. So you need things to be happy and crypto can be like a, an element of it, but like, it can't be everything. Cause then you just, your, your brain rots away. Mine's rotted away the last two years. I feel like way more insane than I used to be way more, uh, mentally fragile. Um, so, you know, um, I've also been trying to transition stuff into an anonymous account. So like I, cause I got too many followers now and I can't speak my mind anymore. Um, is this, without... your, is this your gardening account or, uh, a different one? No, no it's a different one. It's quite popular as well, but people <laughs> just don't know it's of, me. The faces of Kobe me. <laughs> it's so no, no, it's, it's like a crypto trader account, but people don't know it's me. Um, I've just been transitioning to that. So like I can just say whatever I want to say without people threatening to kill me or whatever. 
um, yeah, which happens more often than you think on the internet. <laughs> yeah, the sob stories get really dark during the bear market as well. Yeah, mm. I'm thankful. Out there. I'm thankful for that tab and Twitter that's like DMs from people you don't follow because you just don't open that tab. It's a dark place in there. Uh, I turned it off. People can't send me shit anymore because it was it got weird. Um, but I, I, on, uh, for being serious for a moment, I do think that. Um, if you're long-term bullish on crypto, it's actually the the first time in history where it's very de-risked to work on crypto as a full-time job. I know I was just saying don't do it, and I probably won't take my own uh, advice um, on that. But there are like a lot of companies that build legitimate stuff now that can pay you quite well. Um, they do technically interesting and ambitious stuff. There's a lot of well-funded startups. There's a lot of, um, you know, paradigm-esque institutions. Um, there's like gauntlet-esque institutions as well. Um, so I think that um, I think that there's a lot of people will build a lot of stuff in the next couple of years, and it'll really pay off in the next five. Um, and I think a lot of it will be like non-token as well. I think it, it, if I was founding something now, I'd figure out how to do um, something that's like fundamentally important that doesn't require um, a token. You know, like Matcha or whatever it is, DXYZ? Matcha, mm -hmm. DX, like doesn't need a token. It just, um, people really just does its one. thing. <laughs> yeah, people really want one. That's what I mean. And they'll probably sell a bunch of equity or they'll, you know, get acquired by someone else and they'll do fine for it. Um, but they get to build something that people want. They get to make a really good product and they don't have to like deal with the telegram of people saying, why is the token price down um, and all this shit. So I, um, I do think there is a lot of people who today, instead of just quit trading, quit trying to like buy the bottom three times a day um, and should just go like, all right, what's going? what do I think is going to be important in the future? <laughs> Yeah, um, and just go like build something um, and work on um, you know contributing something that um, in the future will be they believe will be important and provide a lot of value to users. Um, so I might do something like that. I might figure out um, I like building stuff, so I might I do think, that again. I think build, building within crypto is fine. Uh, it's mm. it's the trying to trade constantly when there's no trade. Uh, yeah it's like a marathon not a not a sprint right now that part is over so it's time to definitely slow up it's good to hear from you guys definitely need to drive it home i'm sure there's a lot of people that need to drive it home as well they don't have to force plays anymore and you have to kind of let stuff come to you and Al focus on building and alternatively we all just find like this bear market's link and we just go all in and become super maximalists of it and we sell it as soon as the <laughs> next bull market starts it, it, it's <laughs> Good. this bear market's link what is it he's just shilling his bags he's just shilling <laughs> his wait, bags but wait but i didn't even hear it so if you're gonna shill <laughs> onto our audience i need to at least know wait, what do you say yeah what do you say synapse uh yeah. our people in the chat were saying that you're gonna shill this yeah, yeah. no i really i also like saw it. that cms just wrote a full fucking blog post shilling it yeah i didn't exactly. realize that was even allowed i've been doing yeah. these sort of abstract <laughs> blog posts trying to share like how to think about it i didn't realize you could just write you should buy this i own a lot of it please fucking buy i'm fucking broke <laughs> well like oh. layer zero which is like the competitor which i also like is at th just did a private round at three billion dollar valuation apparently yeah, that's, and, that's my bag, so don't try to flood it too hard. And, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not. Uh. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> then you look at, like, Tanabs, like, on the open market, like, at, like, a 300 million valuation, and they're going to launch their own uh, chain and stuff, that which I've talked about. Well, so, maybe one is just superior cool. to the other one. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really care about getting Maybe the they're both worth zero. That could be the case hey. as well. That's why it's called layers. the gap yeah. has to be closed the other way. Yeah, no, that would that would be the bear case, but hopefully not. But yeah, I think that like there, there's a really good quote. I think Vance Spencer from Framework said this, and he was quoting someone else. So uh, don't mistake action with progress, and that's something that like has really like I think he said it on up only maybe, but like that has really held in my mind for a while. And I'm a terrible trader, and I can't do it. But like looking for some of these plays 
that are actually going to be market leaders because they're starting to develop like things like Elido or Maple. Um, I think are are ones where you can like make investments in, and if you're like bullish on crypto longer term, just kind of like average into those when when the market gives you opportunities and it's and it's down a lot instead of trading. Who, who, said, that, who said that quote? Vance. I think Vance from Framework, but he was quoting someone else. But I really uh, liked it. Yeah, originally it was Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Don't uh, mistake uh, action with progress. It must be a comic oh, right, book. No, yeah, not, not, that, not that, not that, not that. I misheard what the quote was. My bad. Um, so, I know we are getting close to wrapping up, but something that I've been thinking about has has just been if Ethereum and the merge and proof of stake and the, the Ethereum as deflationary, if all that works out and there continues to be a lot of activity on Ethereum, and Ethereum is just hyper deflationary. Um, is there like what would a protocol have to do to even outperform Ethereum? You know, like, is Ethereum just going to be so? Um, just has to, just has to have a hard cap of twenty one million. <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean not 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 Bitcoin. I mean like stuff built on top of Ethereum with a token model. So if all of those still continue to have a lot of inflation. Um, mm what kind of earnings do they have to have to make it worth holding those tokens instead of just Ethereum itself? And one of my questions on top of that would be, could we see to your point earlier, Kobe, like where it doesn't have a token at all, it's just equity and just Ethereum as the distribution token within the app. Like, is that, is that the next, the next wave of stuff that we see in like a deflationary ETH environment? Like there's no token. Yeah. Right. For the thing to accrue more value than Ethereum, it basically needs to have its um, revenues denominated in Ethereum and its TVL has to grow in ETH, right? And then you left to exist in a world where um, valuations match fundamentals, which <laughs> I don't think we live in. Um, but that could make sense, right? Like let's say you have protocol X and protocol X um has ethereum based revenue and its market share is growing um then technically that um the revenues are growing faster than um ethereum is growing and ethereum's price increase also increases the revenue so like i i think it can make sense it's just that in, in practice it never really seems to translate into um token valuation they just go they just they're way more attached to like narrative or publicity or how much people are talking about them or their own market cycle than they are to the actual um fundamentals um mm -hmm. yeah but, I don't know. but we do think that tokens that pay in their own token as a reward probably doesn't have a long life ahead of it well if you just think about that as an expenditure, right? Like you have a, imagine you have a company, you have some revenue and you have an expense. And if you pay out in your native token daily, monthly, weekly, annually or whatever, that is an expense that you've paid because at some point you can't pay it anymore. You have a certain amount in your treasury and you can't continue to pay that out. Um, or you can inflate forever um, and you can continually have uh uh, that expense and that will also take its toll on market valuations. Um, but if your expense is larger than your revenue, then yeah, it, it just breaks. It doesn't work. Right. And that's a lot of what DeFi is. The revenues are um, supported by paying people to use the product, but the amount of revenue they earn is still lower than the amount they pay to convince people to use it, which creates these sort of like down only um, token charts. Now, if you can have your revenue larger than the amount that you pay people um, to use your product, theoretically, you can not pay people anything um, and you'll be uh, revenue positive or you can pay people more, but you'll earn even more revenue perhaps, who knows? Um, and I think that's what people need to um, start looking for. I think there's a few examples of it um yeah. but there's shockingly few that that meet that criteria yeah. but like yeah that's like the biggest thing i look for when looking at like DeFi stuff and there's like a handful of projects what are they 
<laughs> <laughs> well, I think like GMX is uh, is a cool one to look at, but I don't know if uh, yeah, like I like GMX a lot, but um, it's it's like a pretty unique model, so I don't know if it can be like the end game for for decentralized derivatives because it just borrows pricing from like Binance and FTX, it doesn't actually calculate it itself, so it has a really niche market where instead of having like an AMM model or something that like incurs the cost of finding the price itself, it just kind of like copies it from those centralized exchanges. So it can allow the LPs and like token holders to make a lot of money, but like it could never become the most liquid place to trade Bitcoin in its current state. Um, it's but copying I mean, the price. Well, BitMEX was the same and well, quite big. No, well, like BitMEX did uh, like an order book. This is just like an oracle. So it's like uh, if the price, there's no if order the price, book at all. Yeah. Hmm. It's just like if the price, it's actually a really good place to trade on chain because like the price of Bitcoin is like 29000 Like you can like ape $10 million of the Bitcoin on GMX at 29000 no slippage. Um, so it's the same way that like synthetics right. kind of model. Yeah. But it's on Arbitrum and they've like figured out all the front running issues. Like they have a really quick turnaround and really fast oracle. So. <laughs> keyboard monkeys like mm, that's I pretty think. sick yeah wait a minute <laughs> yeah nice. no, no, definitely try it out i think it's it's one of like the cool DeFi projects that that meets that criteria and there's like a few other but or like there's a few others where you think that they could get to that in the future but um not right now i, I knew that was the supposed benefit of synthetics uh, because you would just mint whatever token that you're speculating on with zero slippage still all confuses me in terms of how all that plays out. But I think the scary thing trading on chain is relying on like, how do you manage the trade, right? Like if you need to close in an emergency, it's like, okay, we'll go, you go find somewhere where you can get a hardware wallet, log in and that exact, you know what I mean? And, and get to your trading computer that you trust to do it versus, you know, if you have your two factor authentication, you can basically log in on any device or anywhere. If you're just going. put a MetaMask on your iPhone, mate, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't <laughs> hardware while it's not all this shit. They're just additional expenses. You don't need that. You need to keep your costs low. Sounds, <laughs> sounds like reasonable advice there, Kobe. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you can set like stop losses and stuff on GMX and like limit orders. How do we get that Arbitrum airdrop? Does anyone know? Anyone got any insider info? Probably just like using bridges and different apps on it. Do we like copy what was, Optimism did? Yeah, but the Optimism one wasn't very big, was it? Like, I think it was all right if you did everything. I only got I, I only got it for like the Gitcoin grants. I've screwed. I haven't used any of the L2s because the what what weren't there issues like getting off of them like the time the time that you have to wait to get funds off of the L2. <laughs> The, the fraud the fraud period was that just that's why you so? use that's why you use synapse to take the fast bridge home <laughs> <laughs> you just you just sell on binance or whatever and they've got a fast bridge as well now right binance is legitimately the best bridge yeah they just put shit, stick shit in binance and pull it out again somewhere else being American. plus it gets plus it well, gets washed if you're american yeah you're we, fucked up. yeah we can't do anything fun Oh yeah, you got to use Binance US, and their CEO went missing for a year. <laughs> is, she, is she still missing? Coley, she yeah. qu she had quit or gotten fired or something, and then I think they brought someone else in. Hmm. I don't know. You, uh, yeah, but it, just the the pairs on all the US exchanges are are harder. Even our friends over at FTX, they just don't have near as many pairs because they're. You know, it's amazing. It went so backwards because Coinbase had three tokens for the longest time. <laughs> now they'll list anything. And FTX US and Binance US, all these other entities, like they're pretty careful with their with their listing processes. So um, yeah, you gotta use most mostly native ma native bridges and whatnot. I've just been too lazy to do the L2 thing, I think. Hmm. Fair enough. All right, let's get some final topics from chat because then uh, I got to go. Um, it's not got any colder in this room. It's like still overwhelmingly hot, as same as when I started, and I'm uh, running out of um, bodily fluids. I'm like sweating it all out. Um, Will Peter E ever not be a Ponzi? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. I think what, what I think the clues like, in the name. <laughs> yeah, like the freemium model. I think that's what more games need to do. Like they kind of like actually make fun crypto games where like there's a potential to make money off of them. Like if you're good, but it can't just be like giving out money to to everyone. And there has to be like some sort of of net spender in there, right? So you have to make like a good game with like an actual economy, and then there's ways to make money off of that. But like it can't just be like we're giving out free money. Yeah, the only way I think it works is if you, um, if it's intentionally non-financialized and non-speculative. So like Pokemon cards originally, they were like. Like you didn't buy packs of Pokemon cards and try and get the rares because in 20 years they're going to be worth a load of money. You weren't like buying them to like flip them, uh, make like thousands and thousands of dollars the next day after you bought the pack. Um, it was you bought them because it was a cultural moment. People like collecting them. It was fun. Um, you know, people played the games or whatever. Um, and then I think there's a bunch of games where like people played them because they were fun. There was a skin system or something. Um, and over time, because it was culturally important and people found value in it, a secondary market has developed for certain weapons or certain items or certain skins or certain cosmetics or whatever. Um, now, I think something like that makes sense, right? Like you can own assets within a game where you can own stuff, you can export them to chain, you can truly own them. Um, and if the game is super successful over time, maybe some parts of that will be culturally important if they don't ever release, um, you know, a new version of that skin or whatever. Um, but I don't think anything where you like you play just to earn money makes any sense. I don't think it can ever make sense. You just need new entrants to pay the previous entrance. Um, you need, or you need the like, whales spending loads of money to pay everyone else um in which case the game company is giving away all their revenue to all the other users so i, I don't think it makes sense but like you know maybe in three years there'll be a game that's super popular and i'll be playing it all the time and someone will pull up this podcast and tell me i'm an idiot and look i already know that so it's another, not a problem another question is theories on how a 16z will deploy 4.5 billion dollars which they just announced having raised so you pay, to earn, pay to earn games. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. Favorite Kobe. Yeah. Well, they, 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 said, they said how they're going to do it, right? They said so much of it's going to be in seed rounds, like 2 billion in seed rounds, and the other 2.5 in um, later stage venture. So they're going to go buy token rounds at a discount from projects, um, basically, it seems, and then seed rounds for the rest. Wait, was that a real um, breakdown? That they it was all like that, that, yeah. That was like real. 1.8. Yeah, like, maybe not. But I thought so, Ariana posted it. So yeah, they're not buying our bags or coins, essentially. Well, the VC well, round, the VC kind of is, I guess. If they, it depends on how they execute it. Um, plus, they kind of don't sell, right? Like, I I don't think there's many examples of them just like market dumping their stuff. So as far as investors go, they do have a long timeline compared to a lot of the crypto native like VCs who operate kind of like hedge funds, mm -hmm. you know, they like buy it. And then like one year later, they'd like fucking market dumping all of it. And then moving on to something else. A16Z do seem to actually hold stuff to zero or hold it for a, like this 10 year thesis timeline. Um, sure. I imagine there'll come a day like eight years from now where they're just fucking obliterating every chart. Mm -hmm. The 10 year thesis is over. Um, but um yeah, and like they, they mark to market for stuff, right? So their previous funds will be up tons and tons so they can raise more funds. And I, their run rate on the like 4.5 billion is like 90 million a year, right? That's what they earn in just fees for managing that um, hmm. managing that money. If they, if they 2x it, 2x the whole fund, which, you know, for crypto returns is reasonably mediocre, um, then they have like four, like, I don't know how much, I can't do the math fast enough, but um, they have almost a billion dollars in additional revenue, is it? Um, maybe more um, from the from the carry. So like it, when they operate at scale on like at that kind of scale, they just make so much money from like poor to non-performance um, that I don't really, really matter. I would quite like to talk to the people at Sequoia who are doing the Sequoia liquid token fund where they're not doing venture and they're not doing um, 
uh, seed rounds are just buying our bags on market um, because I'd love to see what their approach is and how they're actually going to do that. Um, I imagine we could have them on. Yeah, uh, I'll message. I had a fight with one. That'd be a good episode. That'd be a really good episode. We got, we got asked: Are Sat Start and Loom Dart the same dude? And who is Gainsey? And someone answered <laughs> that who is Gainsey? They said Gainsey is Hunter Biden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gainsey is the star of a new a new TV show. There you go. He he sells reflex. Uh, um, Kobe, while you look for one, we also got asked: Keyboard Monkey will. Uh, Tubby cats, is that what they're called? Tubby cats ever pump. Do you remember no, they were the future no. for one day? Tubby cats were the future. It was like Tubby cats going to is one day. That yeah, was I think the quickest been, NFT cycle ever. They have been saying since the beginning of Tubby cats, they will not pump. Tubby cats and Froyo cats are different, right? Yes. Okay, I'm down bad on both of them. Now. Tubby cats are one of those crypto Twitter <laughs> ones. The, the crypto Twitter ones just don't don't work. We know that. It's yeah. just not the same. It's just not the same. Yeah, when are penguins going to 10 ETH? That's what I want to know. Never, most likely. <laughs> Unless ETH goes like to down a fuck out, I guess. To 100. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're also asking Keyboard Monkey, will Moonbirds pump? Didn't they already? I think they already pumped. Uh, yeah, that's pump over. Going zero. Pump further, I don't see it. Going zero. I like that there's a guy on Twitter who um, made a 3D version of one of them, and it looks like tons better than the originals. And he keeps replying to the founder with like all these different <laughs> ones he's made 3D, and they look like a hundred times better. Um, but it's uh, weird that people like the pixelated stuff better than like 3D, though. And generally in the NFT space, I guess it's just easier. I don't know on the eyes, less realism. Who knows? Yeah, and then the, yeah. then uh, the founder of Moonbird said that they were working to get stuff named Moonbirds off of OpenSea um, because it's confusing to people. So they don't they don't like the derivatives if they're named Moonbird god. something. <clears throat> Dear God! <laughs> so I said, do I ask if I was going to actually buy Azuki? Yeah, I spoke to the founder of Azuki because I tried to buy. The whole thing when the news came out that they were like serial ruggers or whatever um and he said no and then i had a call with him where he said no again <laughs> like the end me the end me and just said no it's not for sale and then dm me the next day saying do you want to have a call and i had a call with him and he was like it's not for sale and i was like okay <laughs> okay thank you for yeah this was a waste of time um i i, I don't know i didn't read the stories very much i just saw that he um like people were like fudding him and saying he was a serial rugger. He seemed pretty nice on the call. He was like, told me all about like all like what he's gonna do with his vision. And I was like, yeah, that sounds sensible. I was opportunistically trying to, I was like vulturing and trying to pick the bones um, of a car crash or something. So he seems like he's actually got a vision. I was just trying to buy it cheap. So fair enough. Probably better in his ends than mine. Um, <laughs> What else do we have there? Um, mm -mm. I round trip to my Azuki's as just a confession while you're looking those up. I bought, yeah. I bought a couple when they were like 13, 14 ETH, and they went to 30. I didn't sell it. I only sold the beans, and uh, now I round tripped them back. Sad. So I need, I need them to come out with that vision, whatever they're going to do. Pump our Zookies again. It's too late, probably. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of round trips have been had. Yeah. Luckily, I sold mine, though. Thank God. Maybe we should make it up only NFT series, but instead of selling it, we should just dr airdrop it to everyone whose NFTs got rugged because the founder turned out to be like, I don't know. <laughs> a freak. A pedophile grooming cult <laughs> member or, you know, uh, a serial rugger. And then, like... If they start at zero, they can never go down. Because obviously they can go down, but they can't go below zero. They can go back to where they started. Now, people and you always, just make, people make always, so many of them. People always find out a great way to get wrecked because they'll bid something up from zero to like whatever, five ETH a piece. And then the most people, like all our real fans will be like, oh crap, I guess those up only NFTs are real. I'm going to buy one at five ETH and then they'll go back to zero. <laughs> 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 and they'll end up down bad anyway. Yeah. Bigger, bigger question is, do we build a royalty in on it? So we need to get paid. for ourselves. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, yeah. hundred percent royalty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. Is there anything else, Kobe? Um, no. The chat's just talking about potato <laughs> NFTs and stuff, so I don't really... <laughs> Yeah, I think it's over. Well, thank, um, thank you both for joining us. Uh, are we going to do some alpha? Or was the whole oh, no, that's 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 very 2021 legend. Uh, <laughs> do that. Oh, alpha? No, it takes like five minutes. People just want to go home. Yeah, people are just done. So we'll just peace out. Man. <laughs> Appreciate you being here. Thanks. Yeah, everybody. thanks, guys. Good talking to you. Really Catch enjoyed you it. Thanks to Ciao. everybody. Appreciate you. And Farewell. be sure to check out Goodbye. FTX. Go to uplandly.tv slash FTX, you where you can Goodbye. trade and dollar Keep our monkeys average. left the call. <laughs> Keep our monkeys gone. <laughs> track your portfolio <laughs> at FTX. Thank you for Kobe for this backtrack during the ad read. Go to uplandly.tv slash FTX. Thanks so much. Put a dunk on it. Talk to you later. Bye.